What's up there, Workforce? Chris here with Worked Game, and I, I am done with FanFest, and we made, I made a video that said, here's the questions I hope get asked. Um, I feel that not all those questions got asked directly, but we got answers just the same. So I'm going to pick the same list. We're going to go back through them, and let's see what's missing. So the first question was, what changes are you looking at making that offer a form of horizontal progression or a sense of replayability where playing the same content over and over can offer new experiences? This is centered on, can we get an M plus system? Can we get a Diablo torment system? Can you make the deep dungeon modifiers go elsewhere? Can you bring aspects of Eureka that you like out into the open world? Some, something, something that gives us where your weekly capping experience is also new and different and you can choose how challenging you want it like the way you scale up a fate when you're you know picking or your, or your leave I guess you scale up your leave or or whatever um, the systems already exist in game in parts in fragments I just wanted to see something broader uh, the way I feel that they answered this best this weekend is uh, is blue mage I mean, it's, it's an entire class that takes us about, back out into the world in a new and different way. Uh, it has its own horizontal progression system. And the idea of a limited job and talking about possible things like Beast Master and Puppet Master and, and all these other things that could come down the pipe that haven't traditionally been possible in the way our battle system and the foundation of 14 works. But when you remove yourself from those rules and you have this limited job system, you can pay a correct level of respect to those classes and they can just live in their own world except when you're in, in pre-made parties. Um, so I feel that got answered. I would still like to see more up around the replayability of dungeons and around the content that gets rinsed and repeated quite a bit that kind of make when you're grinding content just better at the end game level. Um, we have a great many systems in, in the game that feel incomplete in their vision. Uh, squadrons, challenge logs, grand companies, chocobo leveling, retainers. Uh, they all get pushed out with an initial feature push and then fail to become a system so integral that we get to a point that we can't enjoy the game without them. What plans are there to integrate these systems with each other and or add on to them so that there's a long-term interest uh, where we would use them patch over patch, expansion over expansion, and make them better than just one playthrough, right? One phase. I got my squadrons. I don't really do that anymore. Um, they did not do that. They did not answer that. We're getting we're getting trust now, which sounds separate from squadrons because they made it seem like we're going to be using like named NPCs. So you'll be running around with like Alpha Node or whatever, and that that's that's cool. But it could have been an expansion on the squadron system. It could have been an expansion on the Chocobo system. It, it could have been a lot of things. Um, having having the ability to have a tank and a healer and additional DPS running with you to make the world a scarier place and to open up kind of group content when you're just getting on for 20 minutes by yourself um, is neat. It just is on top of this. And Blue Mage is adding its own separate systems. And so they're doing more of the same. They're creating a bunch of new systems with 5.0. They're letting all the 4.0 systems die. And in 6.0, all these 5.0 systems are, are going to die, um, with the exception of, I guess, Blue Mage, because it's a class. Uh, 14 may be the single most beautiful MMO on the market. The zones are incredible, uh, yet offer little more than Beast Tribes once you've completed your first playthrough. What plans are there to encourage new exploration of the world moving forward to build on our depth of interest and knowledge in these zones? Blue Mage is the answer. That's what they're doing. Um, I would still love to see a rehash of the use of like fate systems. I would love to see aspects of Eureka make it into the open world, um, but we don't know. We know that Eureka is coming to a close. We don't know what's going to take its place as kind of the third installment of that type because we kind of had Diadem and, and a previous relic system, and then we came into this one. And so we'll get something in 5.0 that just hopefully that's something that offers more world interaction. Um, but I think. Blue Mage is the answer for now. It's going to be the answer to a lot of these questions. Uh, Eureka has been the most recent exploration <clears throat> in a lateral progression option for uh, a grind to upgrade gear. This feels like a way to satisfy Final Fantasy XI players, yet it, uh, instead seems to be leading to a resurgent in the community of people wanting to find time to play Final Fantasy XI. Uh, even major streamers such as Ninja, not known for Final Fantasy content, are contributing to this trend. What is the plan for supporting XI alongside fourteen, and what is the reason we have not seen a relaunch from the beginning of this game, possibly even a remaster, or at least a fresh restart, like on the patches? Um, nothing about XI was talked about this weekend. This was a 100% fourteen weekend 
it was a lot of news about 14, so that's not a complaint. And this this question is just something that it affects the 14 player base. So if this had been a lighter content weekend, I would have loved to see this addressed. I think that we got plenty for 11 players that want to stay in 14, if that's the concern. We got plenty of 14 content for people that don't care about 11, and then 11 could just get dealt with separate event, separate, I don't know, separate from Square. Um, 14 has one of the deeper UI screens and complex UIs to a player not familiar with the game. Even using the market board can be cumbersome if you want to manage multiple listings or buy out competition that is lowballing prices prior to your listing. Uh, what changes can we expect in the, to the UI in any aspect of the game, market board or otherwise, in the 5.0 expansion of 14? On one hand, they are moving MP and TP into the same thing, so that's going to simplify that. We're also going to see some abilities get called, but that's probably just to make room for more abilities. Um, I, so on one hand, that's getting simpler. On the other hand, Blue Mage is having its own little, like, scroll book, you know, spell book now. Um, you, you're just... If anything, they're adding. Trust is probably going to have its own menu now. So if anything, it's it's just more of the same from Square, where they're just going to layer on even more to our UI so that you go, oh, I didn't even know that option was in there. Oh, you didn't find it in one of our 87 menus? Um, all right. Uh, so 14 has a very strong RP and cosmetic fan base uh, inside the community. What is the rollout path for streamlining glamour and expanding the amount of what we can store, the ease of collecting to know what you ha have yet to find, uh, and the flexibility to further customize our appearances moving forward? One of the Q&A questions literally just asked about glamour plates. I wish the question had been broader than that. Uh, so we are going to get, they are looking at more plates, they are looking at uh, more storage, um, but they didn't really talk to an overhaul in the way we collect and any if anything it seemed like the way they answered his question we are uh, just making it more the same we're just going to embrace the current system we're just going to increase the amounts of things which isn't a good long-term solution in my opinion um what is the reason we cannot replay favorite missions over and over again or join our new friends on each and every quest along the way in some form of open world level sync to not sap their fun or experience we can we're getting like a story plus it's not open world level sync per se um, but we're getting the chance to go back and replay story we're getting the chance to do that in kind of a co-op um if you think of the game as, as a as a highway and you start here and you end here, we're getting the chance to hop back on at the beginning of the highway. They didn't make it clear if there's going to be on-ramps and off-ramps along that highway. So are you always going to have to go back and start at the beginning of 2.0 and come forward? Or can I hop in right at 3.0? Can I hop in right at 4.0? Um, can I isolate individual patches? They did say you wouldn't be able to just single out individual quests, that you'd have to kind of play the quests leading up to that. But I just don't know how many checkpoints we might get along the way. Uh, because if I have a friend play from... 2.0 all the way to 3.2 and then get bored and say, hey, can you join me? How much content do I have to clear to get to him or can I just join his party and we get right to it? Um, housing has been a pain point in this community for a long time. What changes can we expect during 5.0 uh, cycle beyond new wards that make this system more accepted by the community? This is things like pricing, availability, access to gardens for non-homeowners, etc. Uh, we are getting uh, farming. Uh, we're going to get more wards in Ishgard. Um, they're not doing anything to housing, but with the new destination world thing, you could always transfer your home world to whatever server you want and keep playing with the friends if you wanted to. Uh, so the new kind of world visitation thing kind of alleviates this indirectly. Um, there's free server transfers going on when we start to deal with the data center shifts. So that's that will hopefully alleviate, there will hopefully be people on servers like Balmung who didn't want to move to Crystal because they play with people on Aether, and so they will take the free transfer and, and move off that server, but I, I don't I don't see anything about housing getting dealt with. I do appreciate at the QA that there wasn't a housing question because I think 90% of the questions that people ask about housing aren't something that you could have answered in that format. Um, so this question was not something I expected to, to hear anything about, and we didn't. Uh, PvP, while growing in support, is still plagued with long wait times, poor matchmaking on some servers, and a lack of engagement by the community at large uh, the majority of the time. What changes are you looking to make to improve the PvP experience and encourage more players to try it and make it closer to the level of polish we expect from your PvE content? Getting a new Rival Wings map, um, 
they were there was a question about op uh, about server versus server PvP, um, very like ESO or Guild Wars style. Uh, it got it got interpreted as being a question about open world PvP. Uh, which is a separately solid question, uh, which they said is a toggle switch they can flip on. They're just not sure how to implement it. They have tried it. It, it does work. They had, uh, it sounded like they did it on a real server with like two free companies that they contacted and just let murder each other. Um, I, I would hope they moved them to their own shard and they just moved them off to, you know, some instance, instance at zone. Uh, but if they didn't, it would have been awesome to witness that and say, what is happening? This is the weirdest fate I've ever been a part of. Uh, so they didn't do anything about matchmaking. They didn't do anything about wait times. There's there's not any announced real plan to deal with that. Um, the current reward for tanking is only helpful when you need uh, gear progression or XP. Uh, once done, those are there is no benefit to run roulettes as a tank. What systems are you considering as ways to further make sure tanking or whatever role is the adventurer need is encouraged to do it even if they're level capped and capped on weekly currency? Um, did not did not get get answered uh, at all. It did not. Um, you're just stuck. It, there just isn't anything. The in-game content feels like it is shifting away from extreme hardcore players in 5.0. Based on the 4.0 live letter so far, uh, the streaming numbers alone showed U.S. streams of the game had thousands and thousands of players watching this hardcore progression, so the interest is there. Uh, what are plans for the 5.0 system to make sure the game stays challenging for all players and has true difficulty for those that can achieve it, even if most of us as a community just prefer to watch? Um, there was a panel specifically on Ultimate that was that was intriguing. I made a separate video about that. Um, there is definitely a plan to continue to make content that supports that. Uh, it just will get a little further between. Um, that's that's all we know. The the panel was interesting. Uh, the Mac client runs substantially poorer than the PC or uh, client or PS4. When can we expect a proper Mac port that runs as well as the PS4 client or PC client? They did get a question about ISPs and VPNs uh, that, of course, they don't have control over, so they weren't really able to answer. Uh, this did not get mentioned. Sorry, Mac players. Crossover events are some of the most exciting news we get outside of what is expected each patch cycle. What games or, or developers would you most like to see crossover in 5.0? Um, nothing about any other company was, was really mentioned at this event. Nothing about any other game, nothing about any other Square Enix game. This was very much just a 14 thing. So that's kind of the questions I had. I feel like at least half of my intent got answered. Um, so I was blown away there. And the other half is either things I, A, didn't honestly expect to get an answer to, or B, am willing to keep an open mind about because I feel we have a lot of new systems coming in, things I didn't ask questions about that are coming in anyway, um, things like the trusts and things like that, they're just not fully explained. Seeing what a limited job does, Blue Mage single-handedly makes this game more engaging for me, uh, so I think that that's something that could really improve where 14's at. So I, I don't know if I have any other questions or thoughts. I know that uh, it's a lot for me to process, so I think I should probably just bring somebody in to kind of help me finish this one out. Um, maybe somebody you know. Hey, oh. hey there he is. Uh, so, what's up, guys? <clears throat> what do you think? The, uh, the, we waited in line, and I really, really wanted to ask like, kind of our two highest, the highest <laughs> questions. We were, I was, there was one person in front of me at the mic. I know, it was like, oh, come on. And then the, <laughs> the answers were so very, I guess, well put and, and done. The, uh, we're going to keep asking the questions. I, at, the, at the core of it, we're going to keep asking the, the questions. We, uh, we think they're good questions. We want to know what you have, what your questions are. Um, I know there's I think, a lot of good ones in the other video down in that comment yeah. section. So we need to go address some of those. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the, um, the important thing is, is that <laughs> it's like, oh, man. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted to hear some on on regarding kind of your uh, repeatable content because it's like I want to see content evolve and level, uh, etc. Uh, that 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 is just Blue Mage will cool. be lateral until I'm done with Blue Mage, but then mm -hmm. I'm done with Blue you have, Mage. And you have the skills, <laughs> yeah. And then it you know and the, and the party finder thing is really cool and interesting, um, but I, I think at the core of it the yeah just getting some real meat um, to. 
the content, making it easier on the devs. The devs can no longer, you know, or maybe could never keep up with the demand. Like our, our demand will always be insatiable. They can, you know, they can't do it. They got to find uh, creative ways to capitalize on the investment they've already made in all the existing content. That, that is critical. Uh, I'm excited because the World Transfer Service does mm -hmm. offer now that maps become more viable with everybody here in the workforce because now we can do maps on a map night and literally it's like, okay, if you're as long as you're on our data center, guess what? You're going to be able to take part in this. You're no longer going to have to be on the, okay, this is SARG only. You know? it, it is probably the single best supported, most sustainable, interesting content that is consistently fun in the game right now. It's open world and it also kind of Everybody takes part of an instance. In. Yep. You have fun, you just keep going. It changes and it, a little every time. And you get to go and play in the zones. And the zones themselves are these great playgrounds. And I just want to see more content taken into, into account. For me, that just you know leans into uh, you know uh, an upgraded version of the Conquest uh, system of Final Fantasy XI. It's passive content. You just get points for doing stuff. Uh, and even an instant stuff. And then at the end of the week, it says, oh, your free company or your grand company, congrats. You get yep. cheaper teleports. Like, that's all. I don't need much. It just to say. It doesn't have to be like a full blown Paragon system or anything that complex. Right, exactly. It, it, could, it could literally just be every time you complete yeah. X amount of content, you yeah. get another scroll towards leveling your alternate classes. Yeah. Because the players out there who've leveled all their classes. We can't just worry about, like, right. that That can't be the sole goal because that's not the majority of the population. Correct. The final thing that I would say, <laughs> the final thing, though, is that um, I, I hope that with the, the trust system they're talking about, mm -hmm. that that gives them the power to make the world dangerous. And it's yes. not that you're going to want a trust over a human player, uh, I guess, unless all the people you know are horrible at the game, and maybe that's different, you know. But then you might want have been wanting trust this whole time and you didn't know it. Because you're like, oh my gosh, finally, I can let you know, I can let Brian go. And that's what Chris was, was like. All right, Brian, like, <laughs> we, we've got somebody covering for you. <laughs> um, but uh, at, so at the core of it, like, uh, I hope that trust means that the game can be balanced around the concept of a party uh -huh. um, that can help. Like, if you're playing a healer, bring a tank with you, and then you can actually play the game in the open world and learn what it means to be a healer. As well, you know, like because that's a, that's going to be what the content that everything else after this is about. Everything yeah. that's group based, you're not like the way you play the game and the story isn't the way you play the that the, the, the other content. This allows that the entire you have a more consistent feel if yep. you choose to do it. You can choose to go solo. You like the the, the trust system isn't forced upon you, but I'm excited to play with it. That, that that's my final thought. Yeah, um, honestly, we talked a lot about back when the jump potion was getting implemented, uh, kind of what that would do for the player base. And there was a lot of fear in the community that it would make these players that got to cap and didn't know how to play their class. Mm -hmm. Now, in my mind, going to the Waking Sand 27 times and fetch quests and a healer single target DPSing down mobs doesn't teach them how to play their job. A tank doesn't learn how to multi pull. A black mage doesn't learn how to AOE. These are things. These are lessons that are not taught from the way the game sits today. Mm -hmm. No matter how long you spend leveling, they just aren't taught. The only way to learn those is to be in group content. So you have to run dungeons. The idea that you could balance all of the content, open world or not, around four mans means that you can start to have people who heal in the open world. You can mm -hmm. have people who tank in the open world. You can have people who AOE in the open world. Yeah. Um, you can teach your players to play the game without them having to be in dungeons. Yeah, and it's gonna change fundamentally <coughs> maybe how the world and the game is played. You know, they can introduce it, things that, you know, that instead of saying like, we can't introduce this content in the open world because what if no one, you can't find four people to do it? Like, how do we, how do we make this boss intimidating if there's no, and it, it like, oh, I, it's just me, solo. Oh, no, no, it's yep. not. Now it's you and a group that, like, and then all of a sudden people can start joining in because content, it, it's, uh, it doesn't expire as soon. There, there's greater implications here, and what we'll, we'll probably have to explore it more, in more detail uh, as more information comes out because we, you know, yep. we only know the, the tip of the iceberg. The world um, visiting, the trust system, and the ability to go back and play story at your current level are the three big system changes they put in, and they knock out things on this list and things not on this list, both directly and indirectly. Yeah. So there's gonna be a lot of shifting in what the new pain points are as the game improves, Yeah. Um, because there will always be somewhere it could improve. There will yeah. always be a weakest spot. Exactly. And, and so the game is getting a lot stronger, and I don't know what the new weakest spots will be in 5.0 until 
until we get our hands on it. Yeah. Um, that's that, that's it. That's all I, I had to jump in on this. Uh, well, thank you. On this Chris I feel, video. I feel that offered offered some value. I think it's going to be interesting if uh, anybody's like reading the comments, but they didn't stick around until I poked my head in. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, I disagree. I don't watch the other guy videos. I only watch Brian videos. Or it's like, or <laughs> or they're like, I disagree with Brian. Like somebody in the comments, like, and then people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, they're like, this is Chris. Oh, wait for it. Wait for it. <laughs> um, so, cool. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much. And uh, I think, you know, we love having you on here. Uh, so I got I, promoted from intern. I'm now full-fledged <laughs> workforce, baby. Uh, so uh, it, was, it's, it was an awesome experience being here. I think the game's in a good state. It was great getting to meet everybody and, and be around and get so many of the questions answered. It really invigorated my love for the game yeah. uh, makes me want to play it right now. Um, I wish I brought my controller. I, I think I think I'm good. So yeah. I, you know, we'll come back and visit more questions like this. Yeah, probably for the next live letter or whenever it, we have another list. Well, we got a little bit more time in Vegas. How about we go kick back and have some fun? Yeah, I think there's a concert going on right now. All right, let's do it. All right. Well, I'll let you actually lead the outro on this. Well, my name's Chris, and, and, I'm, uh, and I'm I got Brian. I got I got Brian here. <laughs>